If you want to know the secrets of existence and the true meaning of life, I can't help you. But if you want some book recommendations, why not try reading the ones I wrote? If you are a fan of giant monster mayhem and anime weirdness, why not try Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1? If horror is more your style, you can't go wrong with the occult mafia. Those who enjoy their fantasy with a dark twist may be interested in Emerald of Maddox City. And if you're interested in shared universes, why not read all three? Hop on down to the description for links to all three books on Amazon. Enjoy whichever ones you read, and enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and welcome to Genre Bender's Obscurities and Flawed Gems, where we look at the best stuff you've never heard of. Back when I was a little Omni child, there was a VHS tape that I watched so frequently, I'm amazed that I didn't wear out either it or the VCR. That tape was of Bugs and Daffy's Carnival of the Animals, which first debuted in 1976. First, we need a little background. This is French composer Camille Sanson, who was quite prolific in the mid-1800s. In 1886, when he was supposed to be working on serious music for grandiose performances at the Opera House, he found himself drawn to composing a suite of a more whimsical nature. Collectively known as Le Carnaval des Animaux, or Carnival of the Animals in English, it's a suite comprised of 14 different movements, each one representing different kinds of animals from all over the world. In order, you have the introduction, the royal march of the lions, hens and roosters, wild asses, tortoises, the elephant, kangaroos, aquarium, persons with long ears, the cuckoo in the depths of the woods, aviary, pianists, fossils, the swan, and the finale. Even though he described composing the suite as, quote, such fun, unquote, Sanson never intended for the suite to be performed publicly. It was only ever performed at private functions during his lifetime, and the sheet music wasn't printed until 1922, a few months after his passing. Wouldn't you know it, Carnival of the Animals has since become one of the composer's most popular works, even inspiring the poet Ogden Nash to write satirical poetic introductions to each movement in 1949 that are still recited during live performances to this day. Flash forward to 1976. By this point, it had become ingrained in the American consciousness that animation was strictly a child's medium. But in spite of this, there was still a large adult fan base for animation, particularly for things such as the Looney Tunes. Knowing this, the top brass at CBS, who held syndication rights for the Looney Tunes at the time, decided to commission a brand new piece featuring the characters that was aimed at a slightly more mature audience. I hope you don't mean they got the Fritz the Cat treatment. There are some things about Elmer Fudd which man was never meant to know. Oh good heavens no, this wasn't about making something kids couldn't watch. After all, I watched it as a kid. Rather, this was about making something more likely to be appreciated by adults. The concept they approved for director Chuck Jones was to have the characters perform a classical concerto alongside a live-action orchestra, with some experimental animation pieces sprinkled throughout. The result is the subject of today's review. The special opens with Bugs and Daffy, who have not publicly appeared together in years, debating how to pronounce Sans Sans' name as they prepare for the concert. Sans Sans. Saint Saint. Pronounced Saint Saint. The man's name is Camille Sans Sans. As the show begins, Daffy immediately starts competing to get more attention than Bugs. He can only do this between movements, however, for the show is the main thing. Something you should know up front is that this isn't a particularly zany cartoon. Unlike other works that feature the one-sided rivalry between Bugs and Daffy, this cartoon remains fairly tame. The pair are playing dueling pianos, but this never leads to any sort of hijinks like we see in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The most we get is the pair competing to see who can make the cleverest rhymes as they recite Nash's poems between movements. I've occasionally found reviews that count this restraint as a negative, since a certain degree of physicality and slapstick is expected when the Looney Tunes are involved. Heck, Daffy seems to just give up the competition about midway through and willingly chooses to cooperate until the show is over, thus prematurely ending the special's primary conflict before it can even heat up. Personally though, this never bothered me, not even as a kid. Sure, the lack of visual gags and slapstick is noticeable, but the fact is that Bugs and Daffy's Carnival of the Animals isn't your traditional Looney Tunes cartoon. 
The point isn't really to do traditional comedy, but instead to do something a bit more experimental. Bugs and Daffy serve as our guides into that experiment, but it's ultimately not about them. Then what is it about? The music, dear Snazzy, the music. Especially when it comes to the animation which accompanies it. Carnival of the Animals is performed almost in its entirety, with a few notable omissions. Pianists gets moved to the end credits, while persons with long ears, the cuckoo, the swan, and tortoises are completely gone. That last one was probably omitted at Bugs' request. Each movement is accompanied by a short piece of animation that visually interprets it, and it is here where the heart of the special lies. The visuals run a wide gamut of styles, from the abstract to the literal, from simple silhouettes to complex paintings. Each piece is different, with the visual style depending on the tune. For example, the Royal March of the Lions looks like a child's crayon drawing, while Aviary combines realism and impressionism to produce some very unusual looking birds. The Elephant adopts a cartoony style, while Fossils has abstract paintings of dinosaurs. Now, each bit of animation doesn't last the entirety of each piece thanks to budgetary restraints, so there's just as much footage of the orchestra as there is animation. However, that doesn't bother me any more than the lack of slapstick does. The animation is wonderful every time, and once you see it, you're not likely to forget it. In fact, Carnival of the Animals was the perfect choice for this sort of project. You have to understand that the original suite uses music to create images in your mind. Percussions and violins work together to sound like chickens pecking at feed. Cellos with a marching beat imitate the plotting of elephants. A xylophone simulates the rattling of dinosaur bones. And a flute becomes birdsong. You cannot listen to the Carnival of the Animals without picturing the creatures Sanson had in mind. Meanwhile, music was a large part of what gave the Looney Tunes their identity back in the day. The music was designed to be totally synchronized with the animation to the point where even a character's footsteps would be punctuated by musical notes. This remains a staple of Looney Tunes animation to this day. With all of that in mind, the combination of Looney Tunes with the Carnival of the Animals seems so obvious you have to wonder why it didn't happen before the 70s. And who better to do it than Chuck Jones, who spent a large chunk of his career pushing the boundaries of what animation could do? The result may not be your typical Looney Tunes fare, but it still works incredibly well. Like I said, I loved this special when I was a kid, and I still do today. I don't have the VHS anymore, but luckily it's available as a special feature on Volume 5 of the Looney Tunes Golden Collection, and I am glad that it is. It not only deepened my love for the Looney Tunes, but also gave me a deeper appreciation for classical music, one that I hold to this day. So if you haven't seen Bugs and Daffy's Carnival of the Animals yet, do yourself a favor and check it out. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. I must confess there are some odd beats, though. For example, during the introduction to Aquarium, there's a brief moment where Daffy's voice comes out of Bugs' mouth. But every fishwife fears for her fish. That's just unsettling in so many different ways. If you enjoyed what you just saw, hop on down to the description for links to Patreon, DeviantArt, and all of our social media, as well as links for Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, The Occult Mafia, and Emerald of Maddox City, three original novels I think you'll really enjoy. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.